just in time for new bins to come out. Okay, Bola Buddies, we are gonna go into the Goodwill Bins outlet. This is the uncut version of my scavenger hunt Bolo challenge over on my Bolo Buddies channel. So this is all of the footage, everything I picked up that day, not just the nine out of 10 items that I got for the challenge. If you wanna check out the Bins challenge, the scavenger hunt, hashtag Bins 10, you can check out this video right here. And be sure once you go over to that video that you look at the description of that video for all of the links to all of the participating channels. This was so fun, but I wanted you guys to see everything I got that day. I am going to pop up screen shares of everything that I purchased to show you how I listed it in this video. And we are going to get started with the uncut version. Thanks for watching. Hey, Bella Buddies, thanks for watching. Amazing, right? All right, let's get started. In this video, I pick up 39 things that I list on eBay, and I'm gonna pop up screenshots of everything that I bought and how I listed it. But this right here, I picked up and I wanted to do a mystery box unboxing on this channel i probably paid more than i would have had to because i kept the plastic container it was in and there was a quite a few things that i probably would have thrown back but if you would like to see everything that was in there the stuff i discarded or donated and the stuff i listed you can check out that video on this channel all right you guys so we are just going to keep digging here uh, lots and lots of good finds during this video. The 10 items, or actually nine out of 10 that I found for the Benz challenge are on that video that I popped up earlier. So definitely go check that out and check out all the other participating channels. This was so fun. So what I did is I sent my featured members into the Benz on a scavenger hunt for 10 items and we had to go in and we had to search for them and i don't know if you guys have ever been to the goodwill bins but finding items that you're looking for can sometimes be a little tricky so that is a super fun video and i found a ton of stuff and i still was gonna buy the other things that i found of course i'm not going to pass up good buys just because they're not on my scavenger hunt list so that is what this video is I am still going to pop up all of the screen shares for you guys to see of everything I bought that day. I will include the 10 items. So for those of you that saw that video, some of the items are going to be a repeat, but a lot of them are going to be new to you. So hang tight with me. And this is the uncut footage. So you're going to see everything. I am leaving everything in this video, all the footage from that day. That is a horse. Um, here is another horse. I typically will pick up um, any items that are horse figurines or toys. They tend to do pretty decent. Sometimes they are long tail, but that's okay. I am a long tail seller. I am willing to wait for items to sell. I just list them and forget them. That is what I do. Now, I do love a quick sale and those are always exciting as well. But I think the best thing to have a successful store is to list tons of items in different categories and a lot of times those rare items that are hard to find or maybe a replacement part those are going to be your consistent sales that are going to sell when the right person is looking for the item it may take a while to sell but again that is going to be completely up to you i don't know how much storage room you have i don't know what you're working with so you have to determine which business model works for you. I have a lot of storage space. If I run out of space, I may have to change my methods. All right, this here is a bunch of headbands and I do have those cross posted to Poshmark and Mercari. I feel like they're gonna sell on Poshmark. I did have somebody on Poshmark ask me if I would part them out and my answer to that is no because then I have to redo pictures 
and it's just not worth my time to do that so what i told them was they could buy it and then they could relist what they didn't want themselves on poshmark you know reposh it they would have to do the photos and stuff of course but i do cross post all my items i start on ebay cross post to mercari and poshmark i use list perfectly i have a demo video of how i use it down in the description if you want to check that out if you like what you see you can use coupon referral code bolo buddies all one word to get 30 percent off your first month of list perfectly all that information is linked down below with other links of items that i use also all right, so there were a few items in this uh, haul that I picked up and I ended up donating. They were good items, but they ended up comping out really low. Sometimes when I'm at the bins, I don't comp everything and I end up, uh, you know, redonating some things or lotting them up. But for the most part, I listed pretty much everything I bought. That roll of paper, in hindsight, I kind of wish I would have talked to the cashier or a manager and tried to find out if I could get just a heavy item discount uh, um, discount uh, discounted price for that because that would have been great shipping paper you know to tuck around my items when I'm shipping breakables so I do have a video on my sourcing with Bolo Buddies channel coming soon or it may be out by the time I post this about um, a big bowl that I shipped and I show you a little trick that I have for shipping breakables. I'm not big on breakables. If you guys watch my channel, you know that, but I am trying to do more breakables because I know some of them have a lot of value. All right, those were pipe cleaners. Some paper, it looks like somebody donated a lot of crafters items, those paper bags. But again, you know, those items are not gonna be great for resale if I'm picking them up, you know, it's just not it's just not worth it even if they're new in the package little cabbage patch kid there would you guys have grabbed the cabbage patch as you're watching let me know in the comments if i miss anything if you see anything that you would have purchased uh let me know down in the comments i always like to hear what you guys have to say there have been items that i have missed those were uh pens pencils crayons i look for vintage items and some of those crafters vintage items can do really well so Definitely don't pass them by, give them a look over. And if you see something vintage, vintage advertising on pencils, stuff like that, definitely can be a bolo. I know that um, Rhonda from Got Junk in Our Trunk, her YouTube channel, she sold a huge lot of vintage pencil pencils for big money. And she could have parted them out and made more money, but she was looking for the quick flip and she sold them to another reseller who is gonna part them out. But definitely check out Got Junk in Our Trunk, her YouTube channel. Another person that sells a lot of vintage pencils is uh, YouTuber Rachel Strickland. So both those, ch those channels are great channels to check out. Yeah, that was a sealed game. I ended up putting that back because it was heavy and it didn't comp out very high. I've said this before, when I'm at the bins, I am filling my cart and then when I'm waiting for new bins to come out, I kind of go to the side and comp things. Sometimes I'm in a hurry and if it's lightweight, I just get it and go and hope for the best. This guy ended up being really dirty inside of its mouth. So I ended up donating that because I was not gonna take the time to clean it and I did not test it. So that can be just something that maybe somebody else okay, will wanna deal right with. So I paid for that and I donated it. This item right here, oh I my goodness. I have a I video where I clean this and up and it turns right out beautiful. So if you wanna see how I cleaned it, that's gonna be over on my nice sourcing with Bolo Buddy's YouTube channel. And I think I can sell it. So this I was one of my Ben's 10 items and just cleaned up amazing. No, I've never found money. Oh, you found a penny. Uh, oh, I'll leave it for someone else, but thank you. It's good luck, it is. It's good luck to my, you keep it. But thank you, you're so sweet. 
Okay, so what just happened okay, so there is this lady is found a penny, penny in the bins, and the bins she was telling me that it was good luck, and she tried to give it to me, but I was like, I don't know how I feel about taking money out of the bins, whether it's a penny or a hundred dollars. Like, that just makes me feel weird. Um, so what do you guys do if you find money in the bins? Do you put it in your cart and just let them weigh it? Or, that's what I don't know. Like, I could see if it was, like, in a handbag or a purse or something like that, and you ended up buying it and you got home and there was money in it well you paid for the purse so that makes sense but i see people looking through the purses and the bags all the time for money what do they do do they pay just for the entire purse or how does that work you guys let me know in the comments because i really want to know is there some sort of policy for this or what let me know in the comments i did pick up that um little set of toys i ended up finding three of them they were all the same brand so listed those definitely love picking up toys if you guys watch my channel on a regular basis you know it's one of my favorite things to sell i did grab this little tool um you know what i think that sold yep that sold it sold on auction for nine dollars and 99 cents it's a fisher price vintage saw that went with that play set um i went ahead and took the saw and left the bigger pieces behind I think I ended up seeing that in someone else's cart. So somebody was gonna part that out just like I was doing. But I didn't wanna pay for the big playset part because by weight, I felt like it would be kind of high and just not worth my time. And everything was scattered throughout the bins. It's not, it was not a complete set. It was just the miscellaneous parts and pieces. I think it went to that set, I'm assuming. That's just like a paper scrapbook thing. Would you guys have picked that up? Here's, an, here's the horse that went with that set that I listed. I think I think that was Melissa and Doug. And I there was only one other one listed. So I just comped off of that. So if the item has already sold, I will add that it sold up in this, uh, up by the screenshot. Now, I am doing this prior to releasing the video. So there may be some additional things that have sold since then. All right. What are you guys seeing that I'm missing? I know I'm missing something here. That looked like some sort of inflatable. If you don't know, some vintage inflatables can be worth money, um, especially like the vintage pool toys, the rafts and stuff like that, especially if you can find them new in the package. I did pick up this little uh, front loader John Deere and this Star Wars magic cube thing. I think they'll probably be long tail items, but you know, they're smalls. They don't take up a lot of space. They're easy to ship. And I like those types of items. All right. Now, as far as DVDs go, I will pick up DVDs if they are sealed. And a lot of them are just bread and butter items, but I, again, cross post those to Mercari and Poshmark. And sometimes people will bundle those. I did pick this up. It ended up kind of being a womp womp. Um, I just put it on Poshmark because it's kind of an odd shape and it was kind of saturated on eBay. So that one just went on Poshmark. But I've got that little tin mug. I don't know. Some of the things I throw back, I watch it back and I'm like, oh, maybe I should have got that. I got this and I don't know why I got that. I ended up donating it. So there's the pig. That's the third piece uh, to that little toy set. I did pick up this little guy. He is a bread and butter. A great thing to put in the title for those is cake topper. A lot of times parents are looking to decorate cakes or even people that uh, do cakes, cake decorating, they'll look for those things to put on cakes. That was some sort of game. I don't know why I was looking at that so hard. Um, it wasn't uh, new, but sometimes you can sell the game pieces. And actually, I saw somebody open up a game and they just pulled out a few of the pieces. I know I've heard some people say they pull out the Monopoly pieces and stuff like that. So let me know in the comments. Do you guys grab games when you're at the bins? Do you just grab the parts and the pieces or do you take the whole game? What's your uh, method of madness for games? All right, let's see what else we have here. Uh, that was like a little hodgepodge of toys. There's a little character inside there. It's a pirate 
and I went ahead and listed him. The rest of the stuff I believe I just donated. Nothing else really good in there. I should have looked over it better, but that was one of the things I threw in my cart and never went back and really looked at. So um, the pirate should pay for the whole lot, but it will be a long tail item. Unless I get lucky and somebody's just looking for that little pirate. It has happened. There have been things that I thought were gonna be long tail that sold really quickly. And one of the items in this video that is a part of the scavenger hunt, I will show you, it sold really quickly and I thought it was gonna be a long tail item. That's just a little Fisher Price replacement part. I do grab those. I think that one went to the nativity. That's where I wear gloves, you guys. Did you see that? That was like a cheese shredder. All right, I did grab this Bop It. I have not listed it yet. I'm having a lot of fun with this. Over on my Sourcing with Bolo Buddies YouTube channel. No, I'm sorry. It's on my Reseller Testing Bolo Products channel. I have a video showing how that Bop It works. And uh, I just had a ball with that. This is a little goodie uh, hair accessory. Anytime you see vintage goodie brand, definitely pick it up. Some of those can go for big money. That one wasn't vintage, but I still think I can sell it and it was super lightweight. I don't know what that was. There's a lot of things you pick up at the bins that are just trash or I have no idea what it is. And typically I cut out some of the footage. In this video, I'm just leaving everything so if you want the cut up version of the scavenger hunt just the nine out of ten items that i found for that you can check out that video i did grab this little pin cushion i thought it was cute it's a bread and butter item probably be long tail but i just couldn't leave it behind all right here let's see um this old hat lots of hats party hats now these are pretty cool they have really good comps um and they the sell-through rate's not too bad so i haven't had any bites on it i thought i would but so far none but maybe i just need to reduce the price a little bit that was a cassette thing i normally would not pick that up but i needed a media item for the scavenger hunt so that's why i grabbed it this golden girls puzzle i thought was going to be a home run because betty white um passed away not super recently but recent enough and I know a lot of people were saying that some of her items were going higher, but I did not confirm that. But I saw it and it also uh, filled one of my scavenger hunt items. I needed a puzzle or a, I think it was a game. So I did pick that up. Just a bread and butter. Again, was hoping for something better. Higher comps on that. But, you know, it got me a point for the category for that video. All right. I can't wait to see what everybody else got. At this point in time, that video has not been released, so I don't know what everybody got, but it should be really, really fun watching that. So I did pick up this. I ended up donating it. I thought that maybe I could sell it, but I was not sure if it was complete, so didn't want to take a chance of listing it and having it not have everything in there. So I think that's some sort of uh, cutting tool for the kitchen. Anybody ever sell those? I left it behind. Maybe I should have grabbed it. Okay, I did pick these up. I ended up finding two. One was a double and one was a single. I thought about selling them separately, but decided to sell them together because there were quite a few listed. Um, there were also quite a few sold, but nobody was really listing them together. So I felt like that would make my items stand out and maybe sell quickly. So we shall see. I do have all, almost all of these items cross-posted. And there is two more items that I have sold. These reusable cups, I don't know if I should have got them or not. You guys let me know in the comments. They're Starbucks. I'm guessing they're going to be a long tail item. But I just thought it was kind of cool. If they would have had the lids, maybe they would have done better. It was kind of one of those items I just wanted to pick up to see if I can sell it. Do you guys ever do that? Like... Just pick it up to kind of challenge yourself to see if somebody will buy it. Uh, who was it? I think it was Mom's Nose Treasure. She doesn't have a YouTube channel, but uh, she is a Bolo Buddies member, and I feature her solds in my um, videos. And she sold some advertising cups that I was really surprised sold. So um, we're going to see if I can sell those Starbucks reusable cups. All right, we are going to keep digging here. 
I do pick up this little Playmobil car. I did end up getting it home and it was broken. But first, before that, we uh, this plush that I picked up, it sold really quick on Mercari. So again, another reason I cross post is because sometimes things sell quicker on other platforms than they do on eBay. That was um, the other horse that I was telling you guys about earlier. And I did pick up this little rattle. It had Kermit the frog in it and it was vintage and super, super cute. So I went ahead and grabbed that. Again, a bread and butter item. Do you guys buy bread and butter items or do you prefer to look for items at a certain uh, uh, price that you wanna get out of it? Like some people say, I'm not gonna buy it unless it sells for $25 or more. Let me know in the comments. This little guy is the monkey from PJ Masks and it had pretty decent uh, comps. So I went ahead and listed that this was broken so that was kind of a bummer it did not sell on auction so i do have that relisted i can't remember what i relisted it at probably going to be a long tail item because it's broken this is a remote if you don't know some remote controls can be a big money bolo that one was just a bread and butter it had some scuffs and marks but i did go ahead and list it because it does work that little blimp should i have got the blimp Look at all this stuff, you guys, just crazy. Do you guys pick up hangers? I'm guessing that people that sell clothing, it might be pretty uh, inexpensive to get hangers here, right? Do you guys ever source hangers for your uh, clothing business? I know a lot of people, like I had clothing racks when I sold clothes and I hung everything, but I know a lot of you probably fold them and put them in bags. That's what I see people doing now and then tote them. Let me know in the comments how you do it. What's your inventory methods? Look at all those hangers. Oh my goodness. It's kind of, uh, they get all tangled up and they're kind of hard to dig through. Here's an Uno. Uh, I do pick up vintage Uno when I see it or any Uno that is sealed. Uh, just sealed Unos are just a bread and butter item, but you know, it all adds up. And a lot of times people are looking for those items and they'll search eBay for them. I did, I think I looked that up, uh, vacuum bags. Again, it's gonna be another bread and butter item. I didn't pick that one up. I'm pretty sure I comped it, but maybe I didn't. Maybe that was the other day. I know I comped some bags the other day. Do you guys sell vacuum bags? And if you do, how do you do with those? I'm guessing the ones that are vintage and maybe hard to find might do pretty well. Uh, people that have older vintage uh, vacuums that need those bags. I mean, they're probably gonna look on eBay, right? All right, we're just digging here. And if you guys like the videos that are uncut without the voiceovers, I do have those over on my Sourcing with Bolo Buddies YouTube channel. So a lot of times I cut out footage and I'm putting the longer versions over there without the screenshots and without all the talking. So you can check that out if that interests you. I'm trying to, um, I know a lot of you, I got some different feedback. Some of you like everything and some of you don't. So check out that channel for more. This one, I found another one. I cannot believe it. This is the second Coda Pillar that I have found at the Goodwill bins. Those are a I don't want to say big money, but you know, 30 to 50 bucks for those, depending on how many links they have to them. So super excited to find another one of those. I just can't believe I found another one. And right here is the front of it. So that's even more exciting that I found the complete set and I got it home and it worked. So if you want to see how that works, I do have a video over on my reseller testing Bolo products that shows you how it works. And what I do is I link that in the description of my eBay listing. So that shows the person buying the item, how it works and that the item is indeed in working condition. All right. Wonder if, okay, so tell me this. I've only been going to the bins probably for a year or so. And I didn't, I just started going more recently. So tell me how it works. Once they bring the bins out, when they take it back, are they done or do they bring it out again? And where do those items go? Do they automatically go to a landfill? Like how many rounds do they do for each bin? I'm just kind of curious. I've heard some different things. Somebody said, um, because in one of my videos, I took a door off of a dollhouse 
and it had been sitting in the bin. The bin had already been out for a long time and nobody was buying it. And somebody said, don't even worry about it. That's what they want you to do. They want you to take whatever you can because the rest is going to the landfill. So if anybody has details or has ever talked to somebody and knows how that works, let me know in the comments. I'm really curious about that. So I pay $1.79 a pound at my bins for anything that is not books. Books are uh, 59 cents a pound. I do pick up any t uh, lights like this that are blow mold style. Uh, they do pretty good. Uh, like those are probably going to do better around Halloween, but I have had holiday items that have sold when it's not that season. So I keep everything up all year round. I'm about to grab this little train if I remember correctly. And it did sell already. So uh, I think those go to a game. I do have those listed. Do I pop up a screen share? There they are. I think they actually go to a game, but all right, hold on. I'm going to grab the screenshot of the sold for this one. Okay, so with the train, I did an auction. It did not sell. Some of those trains can do pretty well, so I went ahead and tried an auction first, but I put it at a buy it now, and I ended up taking a best offer of $9 for that train. And at $1.79 a pound, I probably paid, what, 50 cents, maybe 75 cents for it. Here we have a whole bunch of sewing patterns. Um, some people like to sell these. I don't like messing with them because I have to check to see if they're cut or uncut. And I know some of them do better than others. I'm guessing that some of you would have picked all those up, negotiated with the manager on a price for all of them and probably made some decent money. But um, some of the patterns can do pretty well. You just really have to know what you're looking for, like some of the costume patterns, some of the vintage fancy clothing items can do well. But again, you know, some of them just don't ever sell. They're really hard to sell sometimes but a lot of people will lock them up. These might be good for somebody who has like a flea market booth. Does anybody have a booth? Would you sell something like this in your booth? Let me know if you guys would have picked those up. I did pick up this mask and I ended up donating it. I could not figure out how to get the thing to work. I didn't know what it did and that one went in the donate pile. So, you know, that one cost me some money and I lost out on that one. Here's my cart, here's my cart. I did get rid of a lot of that stuff. So is that a Dr. Seuss hat? Would you guys have got the Dr. Seuss hat? All right. I am going through the um, accessories. So these are hats, backpacks, purses, stuff like that. I do typically look through this section when um, I'm waiting on the hard goods to come out or if they just bring out a new one. If I can squeeze in there, if it's like everybody's bombarding it, I kind of stand back and wait my turn. So I'm just, when it's all crowded, I, ah, I don't know. I, I kind of stand back. So let me know what you guys do. Do you um, go in and, you know, get all crowded up with everyone or do you kind of wait until everyone's done? This is a tree skirt, which was kind of cool, but I don't think it was vintage or anything. So I left that behind. Um, lots of stuff I could have picked up and probably made a profit on, but trying to be a little more selective because I have so much inventory but also wanting to buy stuff to show you guys um, what I bought and keep it educational and trying to get some different stuff in my store because I know I do a lot of toys and I want to bring you guys different items. So let's see here. What else do we have? Lots of bags. There's a scarf. That was kind of pretty. The blues and the teals. All right, we're gonna keep digging. What is your favorite section of the Goodwill bins? Are you a hard goods person or are you a clothing person? What's your favorite thing to source? Let me know in the comments. Also, how about this? What is the best thing you have ever found at the bins and how much did you sell it for? This should be fun. Can't wait to see you guys' answers. All right, we are gonna keep going through here. Did you see that? I think that was like one of those things like for your posture to help you sit straight. Wonder if those actually work.
hats. I need to pick up more hats because hats are easy to list. They're easy to ship and easy to store. So maybe the next time I go to the bins, I can make, set a goal to pick up at least one hat. What do you guys think? Not that hat. I'm thinking like the ball caps. I did get a North Face hat, a kid's youth. I have that listed in my store. I think that was my last trip maybe. I don't know. They're all running together now. What are those yellow knit hats? Do you see those? It's the second one I've seen. I wonder if they're like a handmade thing that somebody donated. Look how full my card is, oh my goodness. Okay, so these books right here are a series and I will pick those up and I will lot them in um, like five to 10, depending on how many I can find. A lot of times you'll pick those up at thrift stores and there'll be quite a few of them together like somebody just donates their whole collection. Another good series is The Babysitter's Club. Um, trying to think of the other ones I sell. Serendipity books are good. Goosebumps are great. I did pick up some of those Walt Disney books the last time. Actually, I think it's this time. Yeah, it is this time because I found quite a few of them. They don't sell great, but um, one of the things on my scavenger hunt list was a book. So what I went ahead and did was I grabbed, I'm gonna say eight, eight of them probably. I'll pop the listing up here in a little bit and I am selling them as a lot. I think it'll be easier to sell them that way. Otherwise, they're just gonna be a bread and butter item. I'm kind of looking for um, copyright dates to see if it's a first printing or a first edition. I don't know too much about books, but I know that that is one thing that you should look for. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here and I think that's when I start finding all those books. Nope, that's not it. I also picked up uh, some comic books, which I, I think it was probably a bad buy because the condition wasn't very good, but I just felt like they could be something special, so I went ahead and grabbed them. It's 59 cents a pound for books, so I felt like it was worth taking the chance. I think they'll sell eventually, but again, the covers are in bad condition, and I was just kind of hoping they were going to be something special. All right, so I see multiples of these and that's when I decided this is going to be my book lot. So I've got those at $37.50 or best offer. Would I have grabbed just one of them? No, but because there were multiples, I decided to grab them. And again, I think it's going to be a long tail item. I don't think it's a home run. I'm not telling you to source those. <laughs> it was again for the scavenger hunt. I'm looking to see if I can find any more. I want to say I found a couple more. I think this is where I find the comics. I don't know if I showed footage of it or not. But I'm lotting those up and I'm going to throw those in my cart. A lot of this footage I cut out of the first video because I looked through the books for quite a while. Okay, that's a giant phone book. And if you can find the really, really old phone books, those can definitely be a bolo, but they've gotta be really old. I don't know if that size would have done well or not. I'll have to ask uh, Farm Girl Scavenger Noelle. She has sold some phone books for big money. 
crazy that we used to have phone books. <laughs> Isn't that so crazy? All right, here are those comics. I just threw it to the side. You could see the cover ripping off of it. I did end up picking that back up because I found two of them. So again, I was like, if I have two, then it might be worth it. There's the listing right there. I've just got it priced as a bread and butter. There was a guy the last time I was there and he has this thing on his wrist and he uses it to scan the books. So when he's scanning, it connects to his phone. It was really cool. It made me want to sell books for like one minute. I was like, I want one of those. This thing is awesome. It is a vintage um, educational toy and it's an artery. And it's supposed to show like how, I, I don't know exactly what it's supposed to show, but it's pretty cool. So I'm hoping a teacher is going to come along and buy that for their classroom. Looked in here, there was a bunch of tapes. Um, unless they're sealed, I'm probably not going to mess with them or something special, but I just left those behind. So don't forget to leave me a comment down below what, what you guys do if you find money in the bins. And what is the most money you have ever found? Last week when I was there, there were um, two or three ladies who were seeing who could find the most money. <laughs> I don't know who ended up winning, but I've never found money other than the lady in this video that tried to give me the penny. I think that my favorite thing I found, I really like that artery because it was different. Um, this is really cool. So this was a part of my scavenger hunt. It was my vintage item and they're vintage clothespins. And most of you probably would walk right past those. And they sold a lot quicker than I expected them to. So really, really happy how quickly they sold. And they sold for $32 plus shipping. And I think I think if I remember correctly, they were in a medium flat rate box. So shipping was like around $16. So they paid about 50 bucks for clothespins. Isn't that crazy? I probably should have taken them out of the tote because the tote weighed, had some weight to it. But um, here I am picking them up. <laughs> I think there was over a hundred that I ended up getting. I just threw them in there. It was easier just to store them that way. So I can use the tote for something. Just lots and lots of trash. It's crazy. Just, just crazy little owl. All right, we are about finished here. Thank you guys so much for being here and watching. This item, I'm not sure. I think maybe I should have grabbed that just because it was signed. What do you guys think? Let me down in the, let me know down in the comments. I've got quite a few Goodwill Bins outlet videos, so if, definitely check those out. I spent six dollars and seventy-five cents on books, and the rest fifty-one ninety-one. So we shall see. Be sure to check out the description of the video. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.